that was actually what I was going to ask. Do you feel that the Monkey King was more impactful than the Lone Druid when you look at the game overall? Or was that early performance of Lone Druid against the puck very notable and something that, you know, maybe they do fall back on again? Yeah, those, those are the they kind of impacted the game in different ways. Like okay. I don't know, it's kind of apples oranges to me, where it's like, yeah. well, they picked Lone Druid for a reason that it accomplished that reason, even though they're going to lose the game. And the same with the monkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, did it to Col Yeah, I mean that okay. puck was pretty poor. Um, they took a lot of early towers and objectives. They got first Roshan. Like you know, all the That's things that are meant to happen in a Lone Druid game happened. That's what um, I usually yeah. say when I feed. Yeah, I did it on purpose. <laughs> That's what it is. But yeah, this wasn't feeding. Yeah, <laughs> uh, later on the feeding came. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, they they, they the game eventually, yeah, yeah. right? True. <laughs> so the, the question becomes, yeah. I, I believe what Nat was aiming at is like, if you keep the Monkey King, mm -hmm. do you pick some, some playmaker and you just don't counter the puck? Yeah. Or is puck really that ridiculous? Because he's ridiculous even when you counter him. It sure. Was. But also, like to me, it's like, what? how does their draft look if they, it's just hard because like it felt like the catch and playmaking is missing. But it's like where where do you want to get that? Where you have your mid lane, mm -hmm. off lane is often here her area you get that. But the reason that the game starts so well, I think more than anything, like Zai just crapped on this TA. This TA was level four, going walking back yeah. to base, had no game, managed to find a DD rune to farm some ancients. I think if anything, the one. I think where Liquid could have maybe won the game if they went back to the old patch where everyone was stacking from Ancient. Mm -hmm. you got to contest those Ancients. Where are the, where's the uh, Ancient No one contest? does that anymore. Everyone's forgotten yeah. to contest Ancients. I think if they contest TA's Ancients, they maybe win this game. Because I feel like really? TA got too much room to catch up farming Ancient stacks. Okay. Um, like I, I, I honestly think Liquid could replay this game and maybe make some small adjustments and still win it with their draft. Like I don't they, they should look at this game and be like, yeah, the draft was the problem. Okay, so there's a little bit of gameplay that you'd like to see different from Liquid. Um, but I do want to focus back on the puck. I know we focus on him a lot, but we mentioned it just briefly, right? You pick Lone Druid, it's there to try and counter the puck. It happened when it came to the landing phase. Puck still came online. Is it now to the point that you have to just ban the puck? Don't let them have it? We have to wait and see um, who's got the first phase, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very worrisome for me if PSG LGD get the chance to let the puck go through if they don't have the first phase and then Liquid picks it and still gets. <laughs> yeah. Or I if they don't <laughs> even pick it, that will be. I think the crazy thing to think about is like they first picked puck in the entire draft and then there was no real stuns against puck. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, they had stuff to answer the puck. It wasn't in the form of stuns, but you know, once you got past 30 minutes, puck's like, oh, this game's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Nothing can kill me. I don't need an Aeon disc. Like, I don't need a Lincoln Sphere. It's so. It's so nice to play Puck when you don't need these defensive items. Okay. Well, this draft here, uh, look, it's literally just died. We don't even have a single ban. It's going to be Phoenix for the first one, Winter, Wyvern. Damn, this is... Where do you feel the, the rest of the bans are going to go? I mean, Quickly. This, this, this... Just hero names. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> Razor, <laughs> Tiny, yeah. Or Tiny, Marcy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Phoenix wasn't banned last time. It was uh, Razor, Tiny, Marcy, Winter, Wyvern. Last time. Uh, they ban out. Okay, these these bans are completely different now uh, from Team Liquid. Wait, that Prophet has been banned out a couple of times versus LGD. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. something that uh, they can play on mid and off lane. Uh, but uh -huh. but Phoenix, look at that. <laughs> Rate 33%. Yeah, let's ban it. Yeah, we have it, to ban it. I kind of, you can see like Phoenix Death Prophet. These are heroes that often do well against um, Lone Druid. So LG's like, huh. I'm just, let's, let's spend this. I'm just wondering now, do they pick Puck or not? Because surely LGD pick it, right? Oh. Wow, Liquid it's... putting the importance on Tiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Tiny's... He's still the most, most picked. picked. Most picked, yeah. most banned yeah. hero, or most picked at least, I don't know. Win rate's still lower than the Pucks. He's, uh, I believe, a little, slightly under 50%, maybe okay. 46 or something. So Tiny has uh, the highest pick ban percentage, has the highest pick, but Bloodseeker is the highest banned. Okay. So. 46% win rate. I, I, I hear it in my <laughs> some <laughs> beautiful voice from production. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, considering it's the number of games, it's close to that kind of 50 50 mark. Um, I think Tiny's just that versatile hero, goes in so many different roles and lanes. This is Razor Marcy, right? Like, the, the way I see it. Or you could go for Razor Puck, but they go with Chen. Okay. Different flavor. Chen has been, I mean, speaking of heroes with good win rates, Chen, I think, has only lost one game. Yep. I think it's like... I love how you look at me like as if I could just pull that. that number out of my head. If you give me three <laughs> seconds, uh, uh, I can find that one for you. I think it's like five wins, one losses or so. It 77%. Definitely... Okay. Does that nine five games. and one? What, can you do the math? It's quite a bit. Over nine games. <laughs> no, nope, I and cannot. Two. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. cannot do that quick math. Chen's oh. look good. Okay. 
why? What what adds to the pool that makes Chen? Um, it's I mean just fits kind of what a lot of teams are doing with the meta, like early game kind of tempo. Uh, the, we're seeing also just the heals, like, just seems to save anybody who gets initiated on. I think those are kind of the two big things for me, but more than anything, yeah, I think tempo, when you've got a hero like Razor, um, you know, playing around some of these early timings, Chen fits really well. And he scales well into the late game now, even on, on the Chen, right? Like you, you see the Agonist plus Refresher Orb, Suddenly, you have to actually go on the chunt. You yeah. can't. You can't just ignore him like you usually did. And he does find the farm because it is the nature of the hero, which does mean that the other support is generally a little bit under farmed because of him. But it doesn't matter as you are taking so many objectives early on that kind of evens out. Um, from Liquid, though, the they, Yeah, they, uh, these two heroes <laughs> for me are very similar in what they do, like on position fours. But obviously, one of them will have to be. I don't know, maybe an offlane, maybe a mid lane tiny, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, don't think, I don't know if they've played Marcy 5 before. They potentially could have in one game, but it's most likely. It's picked. They, I was like, what? Oh, it's LG. I just realized. If there's one like, team who can pick Shaker. <laughs> I, they did, they did. I was looking at Nat and I wasn't looking at the draft. Yeah, neither. I'm like, why did you Why did you Ooh, touch God? Okay. Uh, look. This is a hero that only LGD can win with. I thought you were just going to leave it at this is a hero. This is a hero. This yeah. is a hero, guys. They look. picked it. Look, look at it. Look at it. It's a hero. Yeah. So when you don't, it seems like this is like the tiny replacement of sorts. So like teams love these like Razor Vipers with Earthshaker. Or I, I wouldn't say love, but they, that's what they, every time Earthshaker is being picked, it's with a, the, one of those range three positions. Yeah. The reason Earthshaker is good before I, you know, trash the hero too much, <laughs> it secures the lane. You can kind of fissure blocks with the lanes kind of closer to your side of the map, which gives Razor, you know, a better lane. You can chase a bit better. Um, and then after that, you're just you just have one spell for the rest of the game. I was I was just about to ask you. That. I was like, I mean, how many spells does he really have? Yeah. But Zinkyu, he's got more than one spell. Every other Earthshaker player just has one spell, uh, but Zinkyu at least seems to use some of the other ones. Yeah, he he made it definitely work versus OG. He, he looked yeah. he made Shaker look borderline broken even. So do you think I, it's gonna work the same against a team like Liquid who have a little bit of a different play style, who don't necessarily always. Uh, move around the map together, right? Like, they are a team that we have Zai doing a lot of the movement and rotating to people. It's not always a five-man rotation coming out from Liquid. They're also a team that played Shaker quite a bit, so they know what's coming their way. Mm -hmm. They go with the Bloodseeker. Yeah. Interesting, because this most certainly puts the Shaker plus Razor on the offlane, right? Yeah. I think, uh, to kind of go back to that, I think it, it's less about, like, how it maybe counters the other team, but just, like, covers the weakness like Chen Razor you've got no no disables no lockdown I think Shaker's and often picked up when you pick these other heroes where it's like oh we kind of you know we need some more control it's a bit lacking um you don't want to pick the shamans and lions with Razor you want you know one of the advantages of Shaker is he's a bit tankier you can actually kind of front line and like at least in the early games and then later on he can protect those cores against someone like Marcy whose job is going to be to kind of initiate blink and pull someone out shaker's the perfect counter initiation mm -hmm. that's the other thing imagine if you're marcy and you uh dispose a shaker into the team fight you're getting reported yeah. <laughs> I, I actually t think that they played the shaker versus marcy the last time as well um, yes I can they go. did that was yeah that, that should have been the same so perhaps it's something that they've uh, figured out like that yeah. shaker might be good against her like mm -hmm. on top of my head i I have to see the game play out again. We don't really have a huge sample of matches here uh, between the two of those. Yeah. But um, I do like the Chen as well when it comes to the Razor that you talked about. He's naturally tanky, then you have Chen as well. Like, if you go on Razor, you don't finish him off. There's that ulti yeah. from Chen hitting, then he stole so much. Okay, okay. Before, uh, wait, before we talk about this, I, I do want to, but the Razor Chen Earthshaker is actually the same three heroes that LGD picked up against OG. Okay. So right now that draft is very, very similar to one we've already seen. All right, now you can talk about it. I just need to put that two seconds. <laughs> no, it's interesting. Yeah, they they, they don't they didn't really change things way too much. If this is obviously a strategy yeah. strategy that they have prepared. So, Magnus. Before I mean, I guess one thing I want to say quickly, Magnus Tiny. I think one of the things to play against LG is draft. It's great to reposition heroes. Like you need to pull somebody into the fight, like away from the Shaker, away from the Chen. Like I, I kind of like the like this repositioning draft they've got and you're synergizing it with Bloodseeker Rupture. So yep. they're really kind of 
drafting these kind of combos and synergies between between all their different heroes. Mm -hmm. Well, now we have Ursa coming out from LGD. The normal issue that some people see with Ursa is it potentially being kited. Is that something that could happen uh, with this Ursa pick, or are you really in favor for it? A little bit of kiting potential, definitely, from mm -hmm. the Marcy, from the Tiny. Rupture as well can be a, a bit difficult to deal with. But ov overall, I think that uh, LGD are drafting just Five such natural drafts like yeah, okay very uh, they, they aren't messing around at all like they, they, they aren't ambiguous once again you know pretty much where everyone is going mm -hmm. it, will razor go off lane or mid lane that's still a small question but i believe it, it should be the off lane yeah I, yeah I guess maybe with the what looks to be a mid magnus what do you think about magnus that's a you know kind of a new hero of sorts it's actually the first time we're seeing it there we being go. picked at the major Sometimes it happens, right? Like the hero gets uh, <laughs> it gets forgotten a little bit. There are others that take his spot, but I still believe that Magnus is all right. I still yeah. believe that he does what he... Yeah, you can pop your BKB after the toss, but he still does his job very well. And wait, how are they laning this now? Tiny core or tiny Marcy core. core, depending on... It could be a tiny Marcy lane. I mean, that's not... I'm, yeah, I don't know. They could put yeah. the either, either three, three of them. I, I believe the Bloodseeker should be the safe laner, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Played by Mickey. And now the question is... It probably will be Marcy off lane, tiny four. Mm -hmm. With the Magnus mid lane. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I think it's going to be. Yeah. Okay. We saw our first Oracle uh, yesterday for the Major. I don't know if it won off the top of my head, but how do you guys feel about it? Not just this draft. How do you feel that it helps with lanes, team fights? What does it really add? What's the value of Oracle? It's a save, I think, is probably the thing that always stands out the most to me. It's also um, the purge is good against like certain heroes and like I, certain games. I, I think this game maybe less so. But Ge generally, I don't like it into Chans and Chantresses, these kinds oh. of heroes, because he, like Oracle, doesn't contribute at all when it comes to clearing waves and uh, defending. Mm -hmm. um, you do have slight of a combo with the Bloodseeker if you use your ulti on him. He can kill a target, heal up uh, quite yeah. a bit, quite a lot, right? And it is an insane yeah, hero. Like this man, just yeah, it, it, it's definitely one of his uh, favorite position fives. Mm -hmm. What do you think uh, LGD are gonna do? Last pick. They have a little bit of reserve time, so they have time to think about it. But what are some holes in their draft? You guys need to. I mean, it looks like the mid of sorts. Like I just a playmaker. Playmaker. Mid, yeah, right? it looks like a playmaking mid. I don't think they want to go too greedy with it. But are you excited? It can't be Puck. Puck's banned down? Yeah. <laughs> Funnily enough, when they saw the Magnus, I was like, oh, they worried about Puck because I think it was an SE DPC. Some teams were doing mag mid against Puck because you just like mm. last hit everything with your damage. But. What do you think about some of the spirits? The Pango was my idea as well, yeah. but he's been banned out. Yeah, yeah I mean, Void, Ember's still in the pool. Mm -hmm. like, you are playing against Purge on Oracle, right? Which is a little bit of a problem, but mm -hmm. get getting a hero that can jump the backlines and eliminate Oracle would be quite all, quite nice for them. It's okay. gonna be necro. Did not see that one coming. Yeah. Let me honest. <laughs> All right. That's uh, I, I think it's it looks like a laning kind of thing. You're in, okay. They're gonna melee mid. You don't know whether it's like Magnus or Tiny mid, but okay. It looks like we're gonna see Tiny mid. But you're like, okay, necro like used to be picked against some of these melee mid lanes like the Ember Spirit and stuff. But I don't think you're you're not gonna dumpster the lane. Like it's gonna be a good lane for necro. But mm -hmm. um, and you are playing it into an oracle. That has Burge yeah. against you, that has ulti against you, that has Fate's Edict against you. Usually I enjoy playing Oracle into the Necro, actually. Yeah. Okay, so a bit of a surprise uh, last pick then on the side of LGD. Obviously, I'm going to ask the usual question. Where would you guys like to put your predictions? I like the trio, again, on LGD, the first three heroes. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're definitely swaying me towards them. Okay. I'll say LGD then for you. I'm gonna go the other way. I, I think Liquid. I I'm I'm kind of list. When you're saying about Necro, I'm just like, yeah, I don't think this Necro works. I think there's a lot of synergy around the Bloodseeker rupture, um, and I think uh, for for me, Liquid just have some of their like real comfort picks with the. I convinced Marcy him, but not myself. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You sold him on it. You're like, look, I would take shaker. his prediction. You cannot. I cannot. Predict. Shaker and Necro. Yeah. <laughs> shaker Necro. This this. You just yeah. you just want to go against the Earth Shaker. We're yeah. gonna see if it's gonna do just as well here for the second time on LGD. It is game number two, LGD up against Liquid. We're going to head over to Lyrical and Trent. Thank you so much, Nat. Yeah, Trent was <laughs> catching the throw. That was great. They're Good job. There. You yeah. nailed it. Got it. Um, holy moly. I'm looking at this draft. 
Earthshaker. Ursa hasn't won a game. 0-4. They picked Necro into Oracle. Like, LGD, I feel like they're just baiting people at this point. Like, yeah, yeah, bet against it. See what happens. No, it's, it's good. Ursa's a good hero. They want to prove to everyone, right? Dude, Other teams struggling to get the Ws. I don't know. They're going to find it. This one's wild to me. That being said, I'm going LGD because it's LGD. Like, this team's way too good um, from what we've seen so far. And that's even fair. In that's last fair. Game, it was just so, like, Liquid was so far ahead and it just didn't matter. Uh, like, Ame recovered. It was really pretty Dota from them, but this time playing on the Ursa. I'd say this game, it is Liquid who needs uh, the beautiful Dota. They, okay. they have to hit the big moves, or they have the finesse heroes, right? We're going to have these little Mercy plays. Look at this. Oh, such finesse. Jump, 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 jump. Hide away. Zinq Yu, he's on the low ground oh, looking for a fissure. Uh-oh. Boxy going to drop, and they give the first blood over to Mr. Faith Beyond. So LGD hot out the gates. Now, LGD's lineup, uh, no finesse required. This is, uh, I mean, what? who makes plays? It's all so simple. It, right. It's just like ABC. It's uh, You just follow what you're supposed to do with the old flow chart of these heroes on LGD. It's just, we hit good scythes. You know, maybe we'll get some, uh, an early blink dagger if possible once again. Managed to get at 15 minutes last time on Zinq, which is crazy, because a lot of Earthshakers we've seen have been forced into the early shard instead. They, they got shard gold at 15 minutes. Right. This guy had blink gold. That's wild. So, made a pretty damn, damn good game. Uh, Liquid, they got to hit these uh, these bigger plays with their heroes. So, I think uh, harder to execute, but certainly plausible here for Liquid. Three bounty runes for LGD, and Insania is going to make up for it by killing off that courier. You do see Insania down here in the bottom lane, so uh, want to have that purge available to uh, take off the overpower from the Ursa. Um, much needed, since this otherwise could be a really rough matchup, but uh, the other matchup is probably going to be up top, the Razor. Uh, we'll, we'll see what he can do um, uh, against that, that Bloodseeker, if Marcy's still going to just make it the lane too tough. Yeah, you're going to have uh, the rebound speed to help out if there's a link and then maybe even a dispose sort of play where you could either chuck the Razor back or chuck the uh, the Bloodseeker to, to break that and perhaps get turnaround potential. So should be interesting. Uh, they've already done some Fisher plays up here from St. Q and pulled the wave all the way back here. And well, even just to start, look at that. There it is. The link doesn't really end up mattering as you just rebound away immediately. Although now Boxy taking some damage. has already died once will not get brought down again, it looks like. Um, but this is maybe a sign of things to come. Uh, some fissure blocks could maybe be the difference maker for these uh, heroes. Yeah, and then moving to their mid laner here, I have nothing to say it. Very interesting Necrophos pick. Picking it into the Oracle. Always a, a bit odd, as uh, we, we tend to like Oracle versus Necrophos. For as the panel mentioned, you're going to have a Dispel versus the Ghost Shroud. You might be able to hit some big saves with the Fate's Edict or the False Promise, where you know it, it tends to be very telegraphed when the Scythe is going to be coming out, and you even have a moment with the uh, the animations. So uh, they, they really value this idea of bringing down these beefier heroes of uh, the Tiny, uh, stopping this very speedy Bloodseeker and the Magnus, just like cutting through it with that Scythe. Yeah. And, I mean, maybe the thought process here is that they're going to try and, uh, you know, have nothing to say, be that person that just walks forward and tanks everything else. Mm -hmm. It's like another oh, courier snipe before it gets delivered, so no headdress He's either for why. Just get no items. He, yeah. Uh, so he killed the courier, and then he wards the pillar. So then they have the vision of it coming back. This was very sneaky from Insania, really reducing a lot of the effectiveness of the gen early on here. Rotation over. Boxy gets oh. the pull back behind the tower, and they find the kill. So Midge takes down nothing to say. Good rotation for Boxy. Oh, that is nice. The lane was pushing in up top there as well. So Matu is, is still at least getting a couple creeps under the tower right now. Really well done. I will say that they need to do something because Razor is having a, just a good old time up there. Has a whole creep wave ahead of the, the Bloodseeker. A couple of denies along the way as well. Yeah, to be shutting down, nothing to say. I mean, you already know the site's going to be bad, so you have to rely on those other abilities, and, like, you, you know, you're looking towards some of the other benefits of Necrophos, of just, like, the team effort of the sustain moving forward and trying to be this uh, sort of frontline hero in the engagements. That is much harder to do when you're one of the poorer cores. You know, it's not like last game when he played Puck, had a, a rough start to the game, uh, especially because of that Orchid that came out. You can still participate and get things done and then itemize pretty quickly against it. Not so easy on a Necrophos. This, this hero likes to be at the top of the board. True. Needs to be up there pretty high. Ame likewise hurting and giving over a lot of the thirst stacks. Why? In trouble. Pulled down low and going to get dropped. 
That does mean he's going to get his items finally. As Toxty is uh, going to be in some trouble. And nothing Toss to say. Back. back towards mid. Chase forward. Insania there looking for a finish. Can they do it? He has Ghost Shroud as well as Fairy Fire. Holding on to that for the moment. Down low, but not dead. And I think no. nothing. No, he doesn't pop no, Fairy Fire. He's level three. I mean, on the Oracle, I don't know if you've got a chance to. You know, that's, that's a big damage. And I guess, I mean, he had Fairy Fire, but didn't want to pop it. Interesting. Um, but two heroes rotating to mid two times in a row, and nothing to say is getting the treatment. That is for sure. Yeah, in fact, they got a, a kill onto a Magnus in the laning stage, too. Just, uh, again, a hero that we are not getting to see very often anymore. Obviously, it hasn't really been much of a thing since TI, frankly, since he lost the stunt on Horn Toss. So looking forward to see uh, some of the synergy they can pull off this game as he continues to try and bully Ame in this lane. Uh, you know, not the, the biggest in power heroes. You can do some sort of cheeky stuff with Tiny, and uh, and Bloodseeker, of course, is going to run around and just, just punch people, but n none of our, our classics, you know, our Jugs. No. Our, oh, look at that. Boxy gets punished. A little fissure action. Able to interrupt and rebound off cool, or was on cooldown, it looks like, so no escape uh, for the Marcy. But yeah, top lane, definitely the one that uh, is looking pretty good so far for LGD. As down bottom, Ursa also um, a little bit behind in terms of CS on the mag. Although, now with Chen coming in with some creeps, it's becoming a little bit more difficult. Yeah, Wave's still in a great spot, though. So, uh, in terms of moving on to the next stage of this game, who are our movers and shakers here? As, uh, I think, well, he's being moved and shucking about here by Mickey, that's for sure. Uh, rocks and tumbles. Now level six. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Dude, this guy's crazy. <laughs> He's just not afraid. Nice. I mean, look at that value. Though. Yeah. The, the triple last That's hit fair. there. Much needed. But uh, yeah, they're they're getting out of the lanes for LGD. Is a little bit weird. Again, another toss back into that tower, and he knows there's no ghost route. And fairy fire to use. Oh, Stick charge is used. Dead. Oh man, uh, is that 0 and 3? See 0 4. We, we don't look at those things, you know. Oh, that is. That's a tough one. Jeez. Um, well, it's all been <laughs> trying to shut him down. They don't quite manage to get the pullback uh, down there on the bottom side for the Chen, but a couple more of those hurl boulders from the golems, as well as the tornado action. Super annoying to deal with. It's really just the mid lane, huh? Where, where most of these, uh, these deaths are coming into play. Yeah, a little bit up top too, but that's mainly been to get some other separation, and Mickey won't get caught this time. Uh, tries to find a rune in a bit of a risky position. The haste is up top. Mickey not going to try and take his luck for a guess there. And, of course, the vision is still there from LGD. So they're going to know about this. Denied. But uh, not the easiest heroes to, to make a, a great play with it either. So Shinq <laughs> just runs down to the haste. He's like, fine, you know, I will wait for you to come and grab this. Skewer back. TP rotation coming in. Boxy wants to get active. Pulls in one there, the Dispose. Do they have enough damage, though? Insania doing a good chunk of it and will have that final touch. But Zai, Zai underneath the Tornado, oh, ends so close. up falling. Faithbeon on the other side finds the kill on a Matumba man. Y is going to go down. So four deaths across the board. And he almost the one back up, too. And uh, the, the Penitence right at the start there, just that extra little bit of damage from the Ursa, helping to ensure that he can grab that kill on his eye for stop there. But there, oh. the Ghost Shroud. Avatos needs another punch, needs one more. Mickey committed for this, but the Scythe to keep him alive. Nothing to say. They turn it around and get the kill onto Mickey. Not bad. As the worst thing that can happen when you're crushing a lane versus some of these heroes, like uh, the Viper or the Necrophos or something, and you come in and you're just like, ah, you know, that, that little bit of extra oomph, that damage they have. I, I dive into the tower and get punished. It's like trying to uh, continuously punish a Bat Rider or something. Gotta watch those tower shots. That's one of those things, too, that's like, you can see there the difference that it makes. The raindrops, the bracer, the oh, null Mazu? talisman is, well, Ame. It's a hard kill. That's six. Does get the net afterwards, and silence comes out, which creates enough separation, so they can't bring down the Ursa. Matu 5, Insania level 5. Yeah. Not, not always the best that you want for your safe laner, but at least he is out of a tough situation. They're going to send Zai up top there versus the Magnus, or the, the Razor rather, and Magnus having that skewer. Some options versus the Link. Keep him up alive as ZinQ secures that DD rune versus Boxy. Quick enough. Insania. Stunned for the moment. Oh. Turned upon and killed. 
And I mean, that those kills, pretty important, because as you said, he's having a pretty good game on this Oracle. Yeah, and he's a strong hero in the early game, too, especially when you get these earlier levels, right? He's got three points now in the Purifying Flame, so some serious nuke potential. And you smoke up more around, especially when uh, Marcy gets a couple levels, too. They they got uh, significant stun and damage to work with there. Could even do some, like, rebound cheeky plays with the... Uh, the uh, no, I'm going to yeah. get it. I'm going to get it. The Fortune's <laughs> End. <laughs> he's got such weird names. Fate's Edict. I don't remember what the rain is. It's like mystical rain. Nobody I think it's like rain of fortune or something. Yeah. Meanwhile, TP not down. Rain oh, of destiny. So close. As rupture used. It wasn't that close. Ame able to get out. Yeah, do you guys even know he's an eggs? Surely there's someone out there, right? <laughs> and doesn't know about this, this new eggs. It's, it makes this like AOE where all the healing gets amped. The damage. Uh, yeah, healing gets amped and there's a damage per second. And a heal Why? per second on your allies. He will go down there. That would be awesome to get to see that today. I, I don't think it's going to happen, though, if I'm going to be honest. It's going to go pretty long, yeah. I think. Ame still chasing. Angry Bear wants to battle. Mickey trying to get away. Do they have enough damage? They do. Nothing to say. Coming back again. Seven to seven in terms of these kills. <laughs> They're such empty kills across the map. It I feel is. like they have such like little impact on things. Finally, this will be the first one where it really feels like, okay, we got the kill. We're near the tower. Bring over the Alpha Wolf. This seems to be the first impactful one. Uh, that we're actually going to run into at the moment. So, TP's coming through. Insania's here. Oh, here we go, Zai. Wanted it. He wanted that RP. And now creeps on top of Insania. Boxy in the area as well, but still, the creeps survive. They go on in. They take down the tower. Dispose afterwards. Pulls in. Doesn't want to pop the RP. Zai still looking for that perfect one. He might get nothing. Oh, there's an echo here, too. Nothing to say. He's good. They run in with the Razor. Oh, Liquid. They were wanting it all. And they're not going to get anything after it. As Zai gets chased. Zinq in the area. Does he have Fissure back up again in a sec? Four, three, two. Nope. Just drops the echo. Why not? I mean, he's not getting out of there either way on Zai. Oh, a couple of bounty rooms. That's nice for nothing to say. They're, they're just collecting up here, it would seem. Oh. It's a nice little injection of gold there. But yeah, look at nothing to say's items, you know? He's got treads, full wand, bracer, null, and a cloak. Sorry, I thought this man was 0, 3, and 0. Like, <laughs> I'm a little confused. He's just all these little skirmishy, fighty things. It would appear he's second on the board now. That's so insane. Man, great enabling from the teammates. They're just rotating with the Chen and the Earthshaker, guaranteeing that lane, and also just like quality plays too. Uh, these are these are the little plays they need to make though on the side of Liquid. They don't have the damage, just the two of them though. Hand of God is pretty good. Nothing to say. Turned upon, unleashing what they can, but they might just end up dying. The turnaround is there. Nine seconds left until ulti, and looks like Boxy's gonna be able to get a little bit of separation. Zai turns, RP ready, connects onto two. Another salvo of spells soon to come out from Mickey with Insania near. Four heroes, but they end up killing ZQ and said nothing to say. He's living through it all, and buys enough time for Faith Beyond to get here, but Avalanche, maybe he's gone a bit too far. Toss with the rupture gets the damage oh, gets the it. kill they did it to him they got all the little skills the little plays that are possible harder to execute for liquid no doubt but when they get in there when they bring the numbers everyone hits their spells it looks real good i think i saw fate's edict there as well i believe on the save there with the or maybe it just wasn't enough damage but either way not able to connect with the scythe on this one that i think it was actually the help of the sidekick mm. with the life seal that might have saved him Whew. all right liquid Needing it to fight back there as the game was starting to slip, and uh, some of these heroes are getting rather frightening. This early, of course, a Razor, uh, a Necrophos, and Ursa not even really joining so much into the battles. They've got to be starting to be concerned about the Roche potential. There's Chen, there's an Ursa, you know? Right. They're going to try and take over this area and start vying for that Aegis any time now. Well, and this is kind of the thing, right? Like we're seeing the the value that you get out of a Necrophos, which is being this like just beefy force in front. And the flip side of that is that the Oracle being able to save meant that they couldn't go through like a second round of oh, faith beyond. all the region. They'd get toss, dispose, went a little bit the wrong way, but I don't know if it's going to matter. Have a toss, and with Insania having the damage, Liquid, they make it work. It's really important to have a high damage support and the Oracle for this play to work too, right? Because you're sacrificing that toss of the Ava. Yeah. So and for the dispos, even with the bad angle, still able to get that kill just shows how, how much strength there is and why they're able to roam as a trio smoking up right now. 
I think that these next couple of minutes are going to be pretty key because, well, yes, it's true that there is going to be this like pretty extensive, uh, you know, great team fight potential out of Liquid. There still is that danger that Chen is just going to take all the map over, right? He's sending yeah. his creeps out. They've taken mid and top tower. And well, on the other side, Liquid haven't gotten anything. Well, I mean, he's not taking the map over, though. Those wards, as we were just pointing out there, just like completely controlling through that radiant part of the jungle. Very hard for LGD to move in there. As the circle comes, actually from Ahmed, just is like I, I can't go there. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to play up here. I'm going to be roaching. I think they're all down in that area right now. So, Ursa Draft does what Ursa Draft does best: hits to the roach pit. And what is the fear though? There's no blink yet for Magnus. They know. They, they got toss plays. Matu still showing on that bottom tower. No, they can't get it. And I think that just gives them the confidence, right? They just know Matu's not coming. No, uh, no rupture to sort of trap Ame in the pit. All right, Mickey going for this Echo Saber meant that Tiny couldn't get in there. So, no chance to find it. And you also see Ame, he's wanting to scale, going in for the Battle Fear. I was mm -hmm. wondering if he was going to go for one of the more early battling builds, but they feel confident with this. And that's a scary proposition, because, yeah, there's Empower Bloodseeker, um, but, I mean, this, this still is not a, uh, a sort of hero that you can treat lightly in yeah. the late game. Especially with how this game started, too. Yeah. I think they got a little bit of a lead, so just kind of cushioning that there, just in case things go a bit awry in the mid-game with that Battle Fury. Going to be the backbone of the team this time. Doesn't really have that uh, that great scaling mid uh, that you sometimes see. Why he's going around with his little beginnings of an army and trying to get some D wards across the map. As Matumpa Man will farm up. Of course, one of the big frustrating parts of this is that uh, you know, you can't always go for the empower plays when you've got a core Magnus. You sort of need that hero to be out on the map farming himself, making plays happen. Yeah, and, that, and that's what's been hurting Mickey too, is that he's the one who had to kind of run around to make those plays, too. True. Smoke make up. up for that. Looking for an opening. Who are they going to find? The Tumba Man? Ooh. They see this. <laughs> they see nothing to say in the wraparound from Zing Q. Gets an angle. Fisher onto both of them. Toss Mickey back. looking for the toss back with the rupture play. Catches oh, already on the side. Is it going to be enough? Doing a ton of pure damage. It ran out, though. It's not good enough. RP, silence, all in the necro, He's and they there. get him. Yeah, he's still far enough back. I mean, again, we talked about this a lot yesterday, this idea of just, like, the repositioning, of course, has always been so strong in Dota. And now to have it again, just, like, rupture into toss and skewer. Not uh, oh, that's really big saves there when you open like that with the Fisher. Right. Like, uh, that, that's really their best save, so couldn't uh, continue the connections. Well, Liquid, like we said, not giving up without a fight. They've got BKB coming out for Razor now, and they find the Chen. Mickey there, and he's going straight into the Aghanim Scepter afterwards. Yeah, all this coming back to just uh, all the wards they placed in here. Sure, it was like a triple warning situation, but some of them still got left behind. So they had good ideas, the movements of LGD throughout here. In fact, right now, still sitting on a Razor. Uh, 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 ward is Razor. Faith Beyond. Has to pop a BKB. TPing out. Not an option for him. Although the Fissure is there to interrupt. And he's chasing in for that. That's a little bit wild. Not going to go for it anymore. Nothing to say. Runs into Mickey. Avalanche trying to run. Insania is right next to him. So there's no chance that they kill Mickey here. As long as he's got that false promise ready. There's also a rupture with Blink Skewer. So a bit worrisome. They're going to smoke up. Okay. They want to go right back into this at the moment. They know there's no BKB on that Razor, and so Faith Beyond moving right back through all the same wards. Oh, Mickey, it's, he's hungry. He's thirsty. He just mm, blood in the water here. Is he, oh, the tomato. Will it be your death? Yeah, they oh, got Y. They got interceptions. All right. Maybe, though. Skewer back. They find nothing to say. That ward, man. That ward is it's so too much good. work. Trying to chase. There is the rupture. He wants to stand still. Mickey. Has to be careful. They have the false promise. Finally going to get used. The toss with the rupture, almost enough damage, okay. and they do get him. Now they got to kite the Ursa, and they're doing it quite well. Must be said. Zai going to go for the skewer out. Makes his little self a little bit of a separation. And Boxy, the only one that falls from Liquid. All right, things got a little messy there. So I had to wait for some of the allies to catch up, but in the end, still going to be a net benefit there for Liquid, especially for that tiny. Tries to build up towards that Aghanim Scepter there in combination with the Magnus. We're going to have a lot of AoE damage being thrown around from these two. Definitely a, uh, a combo that uh, was popular, especially when we first uh, got ourselves this uh, a tree tossing of, right. uh, of the volley. 
So we see the the difference. And, I, I, and you know, as we're looking at this fight too, I'm thinking about how different this would look if they actually had a shaker with the blink dagger 17 minutes in yeah. and he's not quite there. I mean, this is definitely not the game that we saw earlier from CQ. No, certainly not. I mean, even there too, like not getting the rupture right away on nothing to say is what causes all these, uh, these longer problems. That toss got weird when he hit yeah. Boxy and he was like rebounding through, but still managed to work out in the end. Yeah, and uh, Zinkyu exactly that. So a lot of the shakers being forced into the shard first. Oh no! Oh, oh he's, he's oh, so he got close. It, he got, he it. got it. Here, he finished it. All right, you can die now. He's not going to though. <laughs> no, they're a little bit more concerned about the TPs coming through, and it is Ame who shows only a couple seconds Whoa. left on this Aegisk, but not enough allies to punish. That blink dagger uh, reveal for Ame, and they also got the D ward on that ob that was placed down. Nothing to say. Wants to TP out. Can they get there in time? Oh, just barely off I, the mark. I learned that one nice and early in Dota. You know, what's that? That's, uh, I remember. The, I remember that was the first thing someone yelled at me about in Dota. What? Uh, it was rupture? to TP from Rupture. Yeah, because okay. I just kept dying to a Bloodseeker, <laughs> and they were just like, just, just TP. I was like, oh, you can do that. Changes the game. It changed my mind. Just expanded. I still had, you know, two stout shields. <laughs> and, and I bought a recipe for a Shiva Scar because I thought it worked. I like that. That was disappointing. Oh, it had no. the key, all right? When you put yeah. just the recipe in, it sold your hockey on it. Right. And so I thought I could hit it, and yeah. It just didn't happen. No, it was very embarrassing. That's fine. We've all been there. Yeah. In the meantime... Not our smart viewers, though. No, no, of course no, not. They never, were never, never, never They never. knew it all right from the start. It did reveal that Blink Dagger from the Earthshaker now. So Oracle gets dropped. Uh, how about this, uh, this Midas from Zai, too? You know, he sees the writing on the wall. Okay. They need a little bit of time in this game. He sees Battle Fury. So he also sees this Ursa with that vision. Well, oh, why? He's looking juicy. Yeah, this should be at least Look at one hesitation. kill. They're just like, ah, I don't know. Oh, the birds. Ah, he's back. Yeah, they got him. Bird number two. Wait. Bird two? Whoa. Oh, okay. That would have been cool. All right. Well, I mean, that's a win. Yeah, You had course. two hurricanes. They have to RP you with Chen. That's like, pretty wild. Well, he should be all chatting. I know. All this for me? <laughs> he's far too mannered for that. But I agree. I will say some of those hurricanes could come into play later. If you can get like a disruption on one of those targets, like either Hurricane Zion away from the position where he's going for the RP, or imagine if you you hurricane someone away from the Oracle so you yeah. couldn't save him. Oh, that's the big play. <laughs> the other big thing we got here is the Aghanim Scepter done for Tiny. So Echo Saber combined with that, Mickey, he's gonna start doing some pretty solid deeps. Yeah, it does a lot of damage doesn't have actually the Echo Saber complete. He had to disassemble uh, to finish off the Ags instead, but still. It's okay. He has a, a Magnus, so it's fine. True. And look at that. Win probability favoring LGD. They have done a really good job of making this draft work. And rather unconventional picks, not just for the meta, but in our conception of <laughs> what some of these heroes are good against other ones for. Radiance but tower likewise, attack. Liquid, they're smoking up. And after they do not find any kills, both teams just going to farm up the jungle most likely. We'll see if Liquid want to run through and keep looking for a fight or not. I think one of the bigger differences between the, this game and the last game is just the, the speed at which they clear waves and the difficulties there. Like, look at that. Like, he has to reveal himself pretty hard on Ame. Dispose. Fissure to interrupt. Ame caught. They still have that echo ready. Boxy going to be saved. False promise, TP out. Will he be able to survive through it? Now they still got the break. And now fighting the Oracle, that's a good one to catch. Nothing to say, standing still in the rupture. Can they keep this chase going on LGD? It doesn't look like they're going to, but a good win there, taking out the two supports again. Yeah, even burning the Echo Slam there too. Just saying, I want to guarantee this kill, make sure that we get our numbers advantage here because they don't know when that Roche is going to spawn. It's going to be another 15 seconds or so, so a rather short one. And a Halbert finished up for nothing to say as well. So just uh, trying to be a nuisance this game. Reduce some of this damage and uh, try to make Matsu's life a little bit harder. I'd say a difficult hero to, to maybe land a Halbert on. Seems more right. likely that he's going to be BKB before he reaches you in most scenarios. True. Yeah, that is a fair point. I think that uh, the only other thing is like the evasion can be pretty helpful. Yeah. Creep in the pit, though, and Ame realizes it is time to go, but so do Liquid. They're getting together. Every bash from Roche is important here. 
Is he going to be able to finish it in time? Mikke wants to run in. It's getting down low. Avalanche toss. Jumps in for Boxy. The BKB. Faith Beyond caught him. And Insania, he's in no man's land. He's going to have to ulti himself. Just ends up dying. Boxy Does stuff. not have buyback. back there in the pit. Skewer out. RP afterwards. Where's the follow-up? No, but the tree toss. The volley wasn't onto the right targets. Matumba Man, I don't know if they have enough to take down the Ursa here. Fissure on the other side. Zing Q, full control. And Mikke going to drop. Oh, Matumba Zing Man, he's he out. wants to play cleanup, but I don't I don't know if it's going to be good enough running away, but you're not fast enough from the bear. Ame with the triple kill. How are LGD this good? How is Zinku this good on Shaker? That was so slick. The angle that he blinked to to hit that Fissure and then utilizing the ability to move across the Fissure with the cliffs like that. He just kited the Bloodseeker. He kept chasing him. He's like, oh, I can get him. And, you know, they thought they were going on the Ursa. That Fissure comes down. And it's like, oh, I'm not trapped here with you. You're trapped in here with me. <laughs> that bear just eats him up. That was so crazy. I, I mean... Again, it, you go like a second later or what have you, and it mm -hmm. all looks so different. And the catch onto Insania, too, he was just a bit too far forward. Yeah, both supports just dead instantly. The tree volley, like, they're, they're waiting for this mag to get, and the tree volley goes into the pit, and you're just like, oh, no. But even then, the damage, like, you can see when he gets the hit, Faith Beyond gets absolutely worked. But then, there it is. Zinq comes in, walks down, gets chased from Matu, you know, gets a little tap, and he's like, oh, I don't like this. See ya. Bye. Uh, look, look at that angle. Oh, right up the cliff. That's crazy. That's so good. God, that shard is amazing. No, that player is amazing. <laughs> All right. Fair okay, enough. You got to use this shard. This is one of those freebies. Yeah. And they do have the shard now done on Ursa as well. Brought up from the pit and a 10k gold lead as this game. LGD, they've come up with answers. And it's off the back of the Ursa. I mean, they're all sort of doing individually very impressive plays. I think nothing to say having value in this game is one of the ones that's most wild to me. He's just sort of a body there to throw these like big defensive items on, say, come deal with me. It was just such a terrible start for this yeah. hero as well. You know, like you said, a, a bad lane, and then suddenly he's involved in four kills right away. After that, it turns it around completely, takes the tower, all backed up by the Chen and the Earthshaker, really getting great use of those two supports when they had very little itemization as well. And now you're hitting that peak that you really want on the Shaker. Of course, he's got the blink and the shark. This game is, this game is good. He has several choices you can go for. Four staffs, BKBs, depending on the games, can all look pretty good on Earthshaker. And I also love the way Zinkyu built this. We didn't really talk about it, but the uh, the Tranquils into the double Sages mask rather than committing for the full Soul Ring as well. Pretty mm. cool, right? You're getting that mana regen to stay out, but it's, uh, it's still going to help you get your blink faster. 12 assists, only one death. I mean, he's had a really good one. We've talked about Zinkyu Shaker. Parker says he's the only one that's allowed to play it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm inclined to believe him until somebody else figures out how to do all this. Um, but even with the later Blink Dagger, you know, it, he still made a ton happen at the point he when they needed it. He's an imposing player, this Zinq, you know? That's true. He walks around, he's a shaker, like, holding that totem, giving him a couple taps on the rubs. That's He walks around rubbing his belly. I know you guys see it, <laughs> like, on the things, but it's not just a team <laughs> meme. He's just, he's, like, walking around, all yeah. he's rubbing his belly. He's like, oh, yeah. He's playing one-handed right More now. More Dota coming later. Move command. And look at this, Faith Beyond. Every other Razor going refresher. It's like, I'm on a Lincoln's. Don't rupture me. Leave me alone. It's a great call. I mean, that, that's really what Li Lick would have to get back in this game, right? Is they have to hit these ruptures into the move combos. Oh, this could be dangerous. Matumba Man, do they have vision of this guy? Yeah, they do now. Fissure? Nah, not going to go for it. I guess that's the thing. They don't need to make that wild jump on LGD. They've put themselves in a position where you can just play behind Ame. Yeah, it's Liquid who are hiding behind this off sentry. Right. Need to make a wild jump onto someone. And nobody coming for the fight. Liquid needing to come up with these answers, and LGD at every step have just looked like the better team. More defensive items. Lotus is done. Another nuisance for this combo that they're trying to pull off here from Liquid. Well, you know, there's a benefit here for Team Liquid fans, is that the combo gets easier to hit on your high ground. So the more towers you lose, the more likely the fight occurs on your high ground. This is some maximum cope right now. <laughs> They're hopping it straight in the chat. It's actually good to lose all your buildings. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, write that down, that's good. I'm gonna do that in my next game. Yeah. Well, we got some uh, tier three neutral items. Spider legs Spider for both legs. teams, keep it fair, I like that. Right, great item. I mean, that's needed. Yeah. I feel like they really got to get that with all the Fissure stuff that's coming out. True, true, true. Um, but Matumba Man still keeping, for now, the Brigand's Blade. We'll see if he decides to go back for it. 
I think I saw some Elven Tunics out there as well. Oh, look at this ward. They're all, the three of them standing on this ward right now. Matsuzai, Insania, trying to de-ward. He's got one more sentry, Insania. Can he snipe it? Oh, that's annoying. Radiant are scanning. That doesn't look like it. So they won't find it now. And of course, we've talked about the couriers when smokes come out. How frustrating it can be to play against that. But solid dude, vision. Dude, he is just sentry and everywhere. And he's just, he's not finding them. He's like, oh, I, guess, I guess they didn't leave any wards, huh? And that's so well, At least rough. sneaky wards. Yeah. Down in the lane by the old tier two, up by the tier three. Just can't find one. I mean, and that's the thing, too, is that it's pretty dangerous to, draw, uh, to buy a gem at this point, it feels like. But... And there's the smoke. Oh, the Chrysalis coming in on the courier. They're going to know about that. That's All right, Liquid. Here you go. You got a couple combos. We got Rupture combos, and we got RP combo into the tree volley, right? That's what you're looking yeah. for right now. But uh, we have the Hand of God. We have the uh, the Holy Locket, 20 charges even, as well as the mechanism. So why? He's, he's got some big heals to counter some of this giant Wombo combo that they're going to opt for here. And then, of course, the, uh, the counter initiation potential from the Shaker. It's hard to land all that as a Magnus without a BKB. Sitting behind the Ursa right now. Everybody from LGD there. And the smoke up comes first from LGD. They have vision down. Oh, the preemptive Lincoln too. Yeah, they're they're ready to run. Don't Meanwhile, Dire stand. scanning, anticipating some movement, but not knowing the direction from which it's coming. And Faith Beyond runs right into Matumba Man at the start. The chase down, rebound, hoping to escape Fisher. Oh. That was close. He that was miss. very close. He's human. That was only because of the rebound. If you didn't have rebound speed, that would have caught him. Jeez. Okay, so yeah. smoke down. Yeah, still unfortunately <laughs> for them, uh, unlike with though, it is a PKB spent. That's true. So you burnt an eye of the storm, sure, but you don't really care about that spell right now. Faith Beyond, you know? I got a bear. Almay's oh, got the damage. True. Zai on a ward right now. On a ward. Oh, no. And they find him. The mag. False promise, though. And then the skewer into the base. The RP afterwards. Rupture on top. Toss away. Dead one time. He's a genius. That was what they needed. They lose Boxy, but you find that kill on the bear. You take it every day of the week. Yeah, it's funny because that is the difference, right? When you don't have those uh, position heroes. Because, like, he's jumping and trying to punish this mag, and everyone's like coming, like, yeah, all right, let's, let's just kill him, guys. But then he just skewers you into the base. Yeah. Just can't get the full chain stuff blow up. Echo, one to one. But the Fate's Edict answer, it was too quick. This is why they have this Oracle oh, pick, but, but Mickey, Mickey, he's in trouble. Can't get a toss back, can't get anything. So they end up losing both the Marcy and the Tiny very quickly there. And LGD, I mean, even without the Ursa, they're feeling confident to go high ground with the Chen creeps. That is true. That is definitely an underrated aspect of Chen, right? He's got that big damage to this push. They're going to try and clear some of these out here, but there's the mech keeping them up and hit. They got the rally, the extra damage from all the dead skeletons, but they will back out now after the tower almost dies. All right, Lyrical, it is America's favorite game. Mm. 20 seconds until the Roche spawns. Give me your number. I'm, I'm going to say uh, 90 seconds. 90 seconds. Again, 90 another seconds. right on the nose. Yeah. Like this year. The last time you missed it because you didn't add a number. That's right. But if I miss it, I mean, I'm going to miss it no matter okay, what. Okay, I'm going to go for <laughs> 36. 36. Yeah. All right, we'll see. Jump in. Wait a minute. Rupture? Jason? No, oh, that was almost 90 seconds. Why are you watching the fight? There was a timer happening. <laughs> Why is going to no. drop now? Pay attention, Lyrical, all right? <laughs> My bad. I'm things. sorry. The timing here. It's, it, is, it is very important, to be fair. What did you say, 90? I said 90. I mean, you're 15 off. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, not someone in the chat got it right. That's true. Which is pretty cool. I, I'm sure they guess. did. Yeah. Press 1 if you got it right. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I remember, be honest, yeah, no lying. Nobody would dare, Nobody would lie on the internet. What are you talking about? It doesn't let you post if you're lying. That's right. Everyone knows that. Nobody would lie on the internet. I love these casters. 32 right. minutes <laughs> in as we get ready to go with the, the Midas starting to pay off. Face. It's very important. Midas starting to pay off a little bit, getting those levels up. Is there a danger of okay. this lead of LGD slipping away? I mean, I kind of feel like there, there's a, a little... I mean, you've just got the Wombo combo, it's, right? It's gimmicky. It's a gimmicky need from Liquid, right? Yeah. They, they, they know they have the tools. They're hard to hit. This is what we talk about during the draft. But sometimes gimmicks oh! are good. Oh, but the blink! Ooh! The oh! blink! It hurts. Ozai, get out of there. Don't let him see it. 
uh, we both just yeah, physically yeah, recoiled when that crazy. happened. I, mean, <laughs> I know you guys can't see it, but yeah, th there I, was pain. I think Zai did too. Uh, but the toss, okay, get a little bit of a recompense here. ZinQ pulled around, and a god got a run. They don't have the RP. LGD, they know, they saw it. The chase down and in trouble. Reaper's sight used even. I don't know if he had the Fates Edict on at that point. As the Avatos Mickey, he dies. They, they broke up the fight. I actually chased forward to push the remaining rupture that was left on Zen Q. So they helped get at least that kill. Matsu chased in as well. And I think maybe that's what helps make it so it's less of a loss in that engagement. But Roche is up. And that's the problem. Oh. And it's just constantly the center courser, you know, he's one job. And this, they sit Roche. Oh my god, it's Axe. All right, hold on a second now. Now, there is one thing we got to keep in mind. Ursa Ags is good. Chen's might be get better. Oh uh, a strong in, in dispel. Game, that would be so hype, though. Oh, why, why dude, dispel Ame, one why? hero? Yeah, it's, he's a, you know why. He's a carry. Player. They always carry. take it. But why dispel one hero when dispel many hero is good? That's true. Zing Q there. You can see. But look at him trying to walk up this, too. He was like, oh, I want it. He, he, he kept moving. He's like, I want that echo so bad. And the skewer comes through. But yeah, this is the other side of the fight. I, I kind of missed this one. But yeah, yeah. not able to, to get too much there. Thanks to the false promise still being on. Wanting it so bad. Back in the, the real game here, they are taking some damage. Tier 3 tower already gone and now into the racks. Look at him just sitting those Chen creeps there too with the auras helping out. Heal amplification aura. Sure, why not? 20 seconds until RP's back up. And that's not going to come in time. Now they have doubled the lead that they had just a couple of minutes ago. And you can see, wow, yeah, pretty heavy win probability there into the favor of LGD. It's a bit generous for Liquid. I mean, four. Uh, to be fair, it's like you got that big combo. RP into the tree volley is pretty insane. But if a tree never hits the enemy hero, does it really do any damage? The, the answer is no. That's that's not even philosophical. <laughs> it's just mechanics of the game. Well, that's debatable. Got the Blink Dagger up now, too, on Razor. So that's Blink on everybody except for Chen. Oh, God, and he almost has the Aghanims done on Chen, too. I think he has all the components coming out on Courier, and then he's going to be able to finish off the point booster uh, here. I guess that explains it, huh? Oh, That's dude, th this is going to feel so bad. They're going to RP everybody, and then he's just going to press R. This is where you just let it happen. Oh. You just, you just run in his five, you know? Because uh, they actually don't have a secondary AoE punish. No. In, in theory. Well, I guess there's Avalanche, but he's going to be trying to do some cheeky tree volley stuff. Yeah, why is about to finish this one off? I mean, he might save for buyback, to be fair. No, he won't. Ah, probably Come not. on. There's no way. Yeah. You know, he knows. Why is a gamer? So for anybody that has been away for a little bit, Aghanim's Chen now hard dispels on cast. So I, I think that the ways What's that they had to catch dispel back in. What's a strong or a hard dispel, Lyrical? I mean, it's how I you, don't know. <laughs> that's how you uh, you take off reverse polarity. It's just gone. Oh, like even a stun? Even a stun. Wow, I thought dispels only took off debuffs. No, man. Like weak ones. That's it, it, Oh, it, is that a weak dispel? That's why a, it's a strong a one. basic dispel? Boxy. Thanks, Lyrical. No problem. I'm here to help. Oh. TP, not quick enough. And Zinc Q. Trying to find some more. Has the blink himself. Can he get there in time? Tree volley, but Fissure hey, not going to connect. He popped his A on this. That's actually kind of huge. Nice. Take that. Well played. Yeah, this game is uh, This is looking rather rough. Li Liquid, I mean, they're, they're just praying that, you know, LGD's keyboards come unplugged at this point because it is so difficult to take this fight. It's definitely a, a one-shot play here from Liquid. I mean, I guess the flip side is that if they catch the Chen in the RP, that's the way that you make it work. And yeah, you can see Zai, Chen is missing. He has to find him. He knows that. And if they can kill the Chen right at the get-go, that's the way that they can maybe win a fight. But, I mean, he could be in Fountain. They also don't really have the best uh, like hunting squad, I guess, because... No. They don't, they don't have a... Uh, I mean, the hunting was actually okay. The issue is they don't really have a way to clear waves without the hunters being at the base right now. You don't have some hero who can be, like, sneakily, like, oh, I'm just clearing the waves, and they're definitely not True. four smoke looking for Chen right now. Yeah. Because there's a Marcy and an Oracle support duo. You know, Insania can't really clear these uh, super creeps away. 
They're just trying to get all the cool items. Zinq wants a refresher. You've got the uh, the Agi Blink on, on Ame. It's it's all kind of coming out at once. And when they walk up this high ground, uh, I, I feel like they're just going to be way too stacked up for Liquid to deal with it. They are quite wealthy. Yeah. No, they're actually waiting for the Aegis to expire on LGD so we can just fit in another item. I like that. Yeah, he, he doesn't even want it. Blinks back. Old Swift away. Tree Volley Skewer not going to be there. Has to save the RP. Can only find it, but a good jump out from Ame so he doesn't get caught. Tier 3 tower down. Ready to keep that pressure going. 20 seconds until the Aegis expires. Fate's Edict, Skewer back, Faith Beyond in. RP afterwards, there's the turnaround, and he was not able to get out, but I saved. Actually, he took the damage first, so I think that he was going to live through it regardless. That is so depressing, though. You're, you're so close yeah. to getting them into the well, and, and then just... uh, all are healed. And they stop it right in its tracks, but Hand of God down now. Can they find more afterwards? Sai oh, tries try to get the, the horn. horn toss, but can't get him to the other side of the fissure. Buildings falling, Mickey, Avatos, they don't have enough. The Aegis is down, but there is not enough damage on the side of Team Liquid, and they just can't get their hands around the LGD heroes. Nah, a bit too slippery there. And uh, that's a pretty short cooldown at this point as well for that Chen, right? He's got the Quickening Charm on there too, so oh, yeah. it's only 100 seconds. Couple fissures, pull back, back one. Is it gonna be good enough though? Not quite, Echo out, Zing Q finds his moment, gets the Oracle, and as Ame travels into the base, Matumbo Man dead, there are no buybacks on any of these heroes. Tier four towers are gonna fall, and LGD, they're gonna close this one out 2-0. Still yet to lose a game in this tournament. Yeah, and then you watch them play, and you're like, oh, I am not surprised, so. Right. Uh, things I've loved so far about watching LGD, the different openers during the draft. Uh, sort of a hallmark we talked about about why, just in general. Over the years, what he's done like there, he's always about these like larger hero pools and just yeah. not, it's not this strategy of like, oh, we're gonna keep picking this till you beat it. It's, uh, I don't even want you to know what I'm gonna pick and I'm still gonna beat you with it. <laughs> right, exactly. The, you talked about it, the openers yeah. that they've switched up a bunch of times. Even though this one they played earlier against OG, they've done a ton of different things throughout yeah. all of the different games that we've seen. So, um, very, very impressed. I'm wondering, like, who's gonna stand up to this? How do you, how do you break it when there's like no cracks, it looks like? Well, the answer is not liquid for now. That yeah. is for sure. We'll have to try a little bit later in the tournament. Uh, we'll have to see if uh, anybody comes up to, to play against LGD. For now, at least, we're going to head on back to the panel. Uh, let Nat and the gang break that down because that was a spanking. It was definitely a performance and a half coming out from LGD in this series. But by goodness, this game number two, you know, Liquid looked strong in the early phase of game one, still lost. This time round, they didn't look as strong in the early games, but LGD was still kind of struggling in that early game. And I want to know why it was so much tougher it felt for them to get good lanes. I think their draft wasn't that good. <laughs> I'm going to be real. <laughs> I didn't love LGD's draft, but they're just so good at Dota. Yep. Like, I, I don't I, know what to say. I completely agree. Like the, their draft with the Necro, when it's... Look, when PSG LGD picks Necro, you don't really question the Necro. <laughs> but they pick it into Rupture, into Oracle, like arguably one of the best heroes against him. I, I, I'll have to discuss with a couple of different players as well this pick, but they yeah. just made it work. Even in the game, it didn't look that great. I don't think their draft was awful, don't get me wrong. It just wasn't like, okay, yeah, this draft like has like, you know, no weakness. It was like there was a glaring weakness, I feel like, with the Necro. Um, but we've seen again the sideline, like the Shaker Razor lane is so dominant. Like the you know, you finish with someone, sets up this easy static link. Uh, you know, Zinku, he's got the Shaker Pass. He's the only one who's allowed to play this hero right now. For sure. I mean, he is the only uh, player so far at this Major that has won with it, despite it being picked up a few times. As we're seeing this highlight reel, though, the team fights, the Necro was that weak point that you felt. So how did team fights still go so in favor for LGD? They just outplay you. They pull you apart, left, right, and center. But I would uh, combine the point that Parker was making in your question. It, mm -hmm truly is the shaker yeah like the amount of work that he's doing it's unnoticeable perhaps a little bit but uh, most of these fights are won because of fissure blocks that prevent anyone from escaping theirs as claws right like the rush fight in particular there was one in which marcy goes in 
Uh, they try to go on the sh on, on the Ursa. He just jumps out to the pit, and the Shaker blocks them with the fusion inside. He hits three, yeah. in the, and one's trapped in the pit. <laughs> Insane, and Insane, I think, was kind of out of position. He was too far yeah. forward, so he's like, oh. We've and meanwhile, while, while that is happening, Razor just pops the BKB and runs you down with that uh, yeah. static chain, static link. So it's really... Like, it, it, it shouldn't be this difficult to play against the draft that they have, mm -hmm. but the way they execute it makes it impossible, not yeah. just difficult. I know that when we saw the Ursa come out, there was a little bit of a worry about it potentially being kited, and you think that that was solved by the Earth Shaker pick? That helped a little bit more when it came to team fights? Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it helped a lot. Like, the Shaker was really that one. And yeah. what's funny about PSG LGD, usually when you... When, let's say you're playing versus some team, and this thing is happening, you're like, okay, they got lucky. They, they're, they're just constantly making moves that for other teams, a significant amount of luck would need to be involved for mm -hmm. them to actually happen. Yeah. I think, and to kind of go back to the Necro and also tying to the Ursa, yeah. the one maybe reason, the value I see from the Necro is it gives the Razor and Ursa a better game. Because all Necro does is like run in, tank some spells and kind of do not do a whole lot. Thing? Like uh, just, just have a... Yeah. I mean, I, as far as looking for a reason behind the pick, I just I still think there's probably better picks they could have. But mm -hmm. like the Ursa gets, I think, kited less because there's a Necro who's you know kind of kind of has to be addressed at least. You can't just let this Necro just you know constantly run at you and use his spells. So mm -hmm. I don't know. all right.